Security Engineering, Lecture 9, Segment 2. One of the case studies that every good software and safety engineer knows about is the Therac accidents, which was written up by Nancy Levison, one of the people who helped to investigate it after it happened in the uh, mid-1980s. Um, Nancy's paper um, is in the readings on the website, and um, I strongly um, urge you to read this. Um, the summary that I'm going to give here is just a helicopter tour of what happened and um, you know, a guide to um, studying this particular case history. Now, the Therac 25, the therapeutic accelerator, was a radiotherapy uh, machine sold by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. And between 1985 and 1987, three people died in six accidents. And this is an example of fatal coding errors compounded with usability problems and poor safety engineering. Um, there's a, a diagram of the uh, device on the left. Um, basically, there's an accelerator which accelerates um, electrons um, to high speed. Um, and this can then hit either um, a, a metal target uh, to generate X-rays, or else it can be collimated into a beam of electrons used for um, a free electro electron therapy. And the patient is put on a, um, a stretcher underneath the machine, and the operator sits outside, um, away from the radiation, able to monitor what's going on by means of a TV camera and um, an intercom. And this is what the uh, device looks like at the business end. There's a turntable um, which puts either the X-ray mode target in uh, line of the um, electron beam, or else an electron mode scan magnet which focuses the electron beam on the appropriate part of the patient's skin. Um, the X-rays are used for treating uh, deep tumours and the um, electrons for treating um, surface lesions. Uh, there's also a mirror so that the radiotherapist can line this up with the tumour. And there's a turntable microswitch um, assembly which um, determines where the, um, the turntable is uh, and there are various uh, safety interlocks. Now, as a result, there are two modes of operation. You can have a 25... Um, um, mega electron volt focused electron beam on the target uh, to generate x-rays or you can have a spread electron beam for skin treatment that's got one percent of the beam current and the safety requirement here is that you mustn't fire the hundred percent beam at a human in other words you mustn't fire the x-ray beam through the electron mode scan magnet uh, because that can potentially give the patient a, a lethal dose of, uh, of radiation now the Therac 25 was an evolution of a previous model, the Therac 20, which had mechanical interlocks to prevent the high intensity beam being used unless the X-ray target was in place. And later on, they discovered that the Therac 20 also suffered from software bugs, and it was possible in some circumstances to fire the high intensity beam um, at the electron scan magnet. Uh, but when that happened, the safety interlocks uh, caused circuit breakers to blow and the thing to not work. And so people had come to the conclusion that the software was safe, even although it wasn't, uh, because the hardware interlocks had been masking faults which were potentially lethal. What then happened is that the Therac 25 replaced these with software. And they did a fault tree analysis of the kind that we discussed um, earlier on in this course. Um, but they basically thought up numbers and stuck them in. Um, they assigned a probability of 10 to the power minus 11 to computer set, selects the wrong energy. And at most places in the fault tree where they worried about a software bug um, causing something to go wrong, they arbitrarily assigned a probability of 10 to the minus 4, 1 in 10,000. And the code was poorly written and unstructured and not to be documented. Um, it ran on a PDP-11, um, an old mini computer. In fact, it was the kind that I used when I was a maths undergraduate here in the 1970s. Um, and although we had high-level languages to write in, um, this particular software wasn't written in a high-level language, it was written in assembler. So all sorts of things could go wrong, and in the end, did go wrong. So there were a series of um, accidents that didn't result in deaths in 1985 in Marietta in Georgia. Uh, a woman's shoulder was burned, and um, she settled out of court and the, the regulator, the American Food and Drugs Administration, wasn't told. Later in Canada, in Ontario, the following month, a woman's hip was burned, 
and AECR investigated and found a microswitch error but couldn't reproduce the fault. Um, they changed the software anyway and um, carried on. And then in December in Yakima in Washington state, a woman's hip was burned and again the uh, reaction of atomic energy of Canada Limited was denial. They reckoned it could not have been a malfunction and didn't bother to drive, dig down and find out what the root cause was. The following year, there were two fatal accidents, both at the East Texas Cancer Center. In March 1986, a man was burned in the uh, back and neck, and he died five months later of complications. And at the time, they couldn't um, reproduce the fault, but at the same place, three weeks later, another man was burned on the face uh, and died. And this made the hospital physicist determined to reproduce the flaw. And as the article describes, um, he found that if you edited the parameters too quickly when moving from an X-ray to uh, an electron beam mode of operation, the safety interlock failed. And it was a specific combination of things you had to do. You had to edit the parameters twice within eight seconds um, by using the up arrow on the uh, cursor key to, uh, to do the editing. In that case, you managed to circumvent the safety interlock uh, and, uh, and you ended up with a machine that, that could kill somebody. Then the following year in Yakima in Washington, um, a man was burned in the chest and died due to a different bug that's now thought to have caused the Ontario accident. So here we had um, a machine that was demonstrably lethal and where the um, fatal accident was reproducible. And when they went back and uh, tried to reproduce that on the Tharac 20, they found they could, um, only it caused circuit breakers to blow. And here's what the screen looks like. Um, there's uh, a number of um, uh, data fields in a good old fashioned um, 80 by 24 VT100 terminal. And um, you've got um, things like the gallery rotation and collimator rotation and accessory number and so on. And um, what you've got to do uh, is go through this and edit it. And of course, the critical thing is the beam type X. Is it going to be an X-ray or is it going to be an electron beam? And what's going to be the energy? And if you edit beam type to electron beam and the edit doesn't take, uh, then you can end up killing somebody. And this was due to poor software design. Now, the detailed description of what happened is in the paper, um, but there's um, a, a turntable and um, there's a variable that sets more than en an energy level, and data entry complete can be set either by the data entry routine or by the keyboard handler. And if the value MIOS is set and data entry is, is exited, then it could be edited again, provided you did so within eight seconds, because a routine was then called, which took eight seconds to finish and um, would have blocked the safety interlock. Um, the details are pretty horrible, and I suggest that you go to the paper and dig through them um, in order to understand um, what a complete mess the thing was. So what sort of lessons do we learn from that? Well, um, there's a number of lessons. Atomic Energy of Canada Limited had basically ignored the safety aspects of the software. They confused reliability with safety. Since the thing worked, or appeared to work, and since the previous version, which used roughly the same software, had worked for years, they reckoned it was safe. There wasn't defensive design, and when things went wrong, there was inadequate reporting and follow-up and regulation. For example, they didn't explain the Ontario accident at the time. Their risk assessments were completely unrealistic, because they just plucked um, probabilities out of thin air and plugged them into their failure modes and events analysis. Um, and there were completely inadequate software engineering practices. The specification had been put together as an afterthought. The architecture was complex. The uh, coding was dangerous, being basically a spaghetti mess of assembler code. There had been little um, testing, and there was very careless design of the human computer interface. And the end result of this is that Atomic Energy of Canada Limited got out of the medical equipment business. Again, you might think that people have learned, but no, um, similar accidents are still happening to this day. And there's an article from the New York Times, uh, which gives an example of a more recent accident. <laughs>